Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Accurately determining the sex of your boa constrictors is absolutely essential if you want to be successful breeding them. Today I'm going to discuss the several different methods that you can use to do this, including a very simple straightforward method that I recommend for sexing baby boa constrictors. You can do this at home with no special equipment after just a few minutes of practice. I'm also going to demonstrate how to visually sex adult boa constrictors. If you find this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my future videos on boa constrictors. The methods that are used to sex boa constrictors rely on the detection of the male sex organs known as the hemipenes. So as you may know, the hemipenes are like a paired penis that's stored, inverted inside out within the tail of the male animal. It's almost like a sock that's rolled inside out back up in the tail. And during copulation, one of the hemipenes comes out of the cloaca or vent at the base of the tail, is inserted into the cloaca of the female, and it fertilizes the eggs. So the way that we determine the sex is just to determine by a variety of different methods, whether the animal has a hemipenes. And if it, hemipenes are detected, that's a male. If you don't detect a hemipenes, by default, that's a female. The most common method that was historically used for sexing snakes is called probing. And this is a probe set. So there are five of these little metal probes and they range in size from this little tiny one that is used for a hatching colubrid or a small, very small snake, up to this much larger probe that's used for a large snake like an adult python. And you can see there are several sizes in between. And so the idea about probing is that you insert the probe into the cloaca of the snake and then you push it back towards the tip of the tail and in a male animal that has those inverted hemipenes, the probe will enter into the hemipenes and it will go farther up into the tail. In a female, there's a much shallower opening and the probe can only be inserted a fraction of the distance. And then what you do is once you push the probe in, you pull it back out and you make a note of how far it penetrated. And then you compare it to the number of subcaudal scales on the base of the tail of the snake. And in a male boa constrictor, the probe will penetrate something like 20 to 30 of the subcaudal scales, whereas a female is a fraction of that. It might only be 5 to 10 of the subcaudal scales. So probing is used pretty widely on a variety of different snakes. However, I don't recommend it for probing boa constrictors. You need to get these special probes, and it's very, very fiddly, and it's very difficult to get the probe you know, to go up into the snake like that. It requires typically two people, one to hold the snake and one to push the probe in. And then it can be inaccurate because a lot of people are worried they're going to damage their snake by sticking that probe up in there. So um, they might only push in a little bit and they might think they have a female when really it's a male. And I've had several snakes that I've gotten as babies that are supposedly females that turn out to be males. That might be the reason why. In addition, you can actually damage a snake if you push it too far in. You can do some damage and there are some species of snakes like carpet pythons that have very thin hemipenes which are noted to be damaged sometimes by probing. So again, I don't recommend probing for boa constrictors. There's easier and more accurate ways of sexing boa constrictors. The second method used to sex boa constrictors, which I also don't recommend, is called popping. And with popping, you gently push on the base of the tail and you pop out the inverted hemipenes and you can see visually the presence of the hemipenes to determine that you have a male. If you don't see a hemipenes, by default you have a female. And I'm not actually going to do this, since actually I've never done it and I don't know how to do it. Um, but basically, you just have to grasp the snake by the tail and then apply some gentle pressure right at the base of the tail. And again, I've never done this. I've never tried to do it. It looks like you could 
potentially damage the snake if you push too hard or if you don't know what you're doing. In addition, when you push out those hemipenes, it's possible they won't go back in and they become prolapsed. And then you may actually need to have the snake's hemipenes amputated, which you know would be disastrous. So I don't recommend popping boa constrictors, although I've seen many videos of people doing this. There's a third way, which is much easier, more accurate, and much less uh, hazardous to your snake. The procedure I recommend for sexing your boa constrictor, which I use for all my baby and juvenile boas, is called palpation. And this involves palpation or feeling for the presence of the hemipenes through the tail, at the undersurface of the tail. In the males, you'll feel these two little bumps that almost feel like little round BBs about a quarter to a third of the way down the tail, depending on how well endowed your male is. If you don't feel these little bumps, there's not a hemipenes and you have a female. And so the way that it works is you hold your boa in one hand and then you put your index finger on the belly or ventral surface of the boa and you put your thumb on the backbone of the boa and starting at about the cloaca, you apply gentle pressure and you just slowly move your hand down, feeling with your index finger for the two little bumps. Okay, and I felt them right about there. Let me try it again. Okay, yep, right there. So you want to put enough pressure that you can feel them, but of course you don't want too much that you're going to damage your snake. And sometimes the snake will kind of tense up its tail and you, you can't feel them because of the tenses up its tail. So you have to repeat it a few times. And typically the way that I do it, each session I repeat the procedure two to three times until I either feel or I don't feel the hemipenes. And once you feel those two little bumps, it's unmistakable. You feel the bumps, you know you have a male pretty much 100%. So what I do is I write the results of the session of palpation on the back of the record card that I have taped to all my BOAS tubs. And then I go back in about a week and I repeat the process, but I don't look what result I got the previous time because I don't want to bias my result. And I always repeat the process two to three times just to be absolutely sure that I am confident with my sexing. Again, if you feel the two little bumps, you know that it's a hemipenes, you know you have a male, but if you don't feel them, you probably have a female, but it's possible that the male just wasn't cooperating. And once you know how to do this, you can palpate a male or an animal in about a minute. You can get through lots of boa, baby boas. You don't need an assistant to hold the boa and you don't need any special equipment or you don't have to worry about possibly damaging your boa. A final method for sexing snakes that I just briefly wanted to mention is through DNA analysis. And the way this works is you send off a shed skin or a drop of blood of your snake and they do a chromosome analysis to determine if it's a male or if it's a female. And for a boa this would be complete overkill because there's a lot easier ways of determining the sex. But for some other snakes like green tree pythons, carpet pythons, it's you know much more difficult to sex with the methods I described. And so the ability to use DNA analysis for sexing is very valuable for breeders that work with these species. It's also great for certain types of lizards and uh, tortoises, as well as venomous snakes, where it might be very risky to try to probe a, a venomous snake for obvious reasons. The palpation technique works great for baby boas up to about two years or so of age. Once they reach a larger size though, it becomes harder to feel the hemipenes and they become more resistant to the procedure. But by the time that they're sub-adults, the physical differences in the tail between the male and the female become increasingly obvious. So this is a male adult uh, Guiana true red tail boa. And I just want to show you his tail. And so the tail of the male is typically quite a bit longer than the tail of a similar size female. If this guy is going to cooperate. So 
he's uh, really spirited today. So this is his, that's the cloaca right there. You can see the size of his tail. We're looking at about probably eight or nine inches long. And this snake is maybe six and a half feet long. The other difference is the shape of the tail is much thicker towards the tip. So you can see that the thickness of the tail is very thick. He's got these hemipenes in here that take up the space. And then you have this pretty abrupt tapering um, at the tip of the tail. The female has a much more gradual conical shape. The other obvious difference are the spurs, the size of the spurs. So in adult male boas, the spurs are unmistakable. They're these little claws that stick out on either side of the cloaca. And you may actually be scratched. If you handle a boa, it might end up scratching you with its spurs. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the little claws are pretty obvious. In a female, the spurs, if they're present at all, they're very small. And often females don't even have the spurs, or at least not externally visible spurs. So once you know the differences, it's pretty obvious comparing the male and the female. Now I want to show you the tail of a female. This is a Guiana red tail boa constrictor. And you can see her tail is quite a bit shorter in relation to the size of her body. She's actually about a foot longer than the male I just showed you. And the shape of the tail is much more conical, so it's a much more gradual tapering towards the tip of the tail. In addition, she does not have any spurs. So looking at this tail compared to the male I just showed you, the differences are pretty obvious once you know what to look for. To end the video, I wanted to show you guys this beautiful boa that I acquired last year. This is a female Argentine boa, boa constrictor occidentalis. And I was lucky to find a really nice pair to add to my breeding group. These guys are getting harder and harder to find. Um, they used to, it seems like 10 years ago, you could get them all over the place for a relatively inexpensive price. But they've become really popular lately and the price has gone way up. Unfortunately, there's not much of a supply and everybody wants these. So I picked up this really nice pair to add to my breeding group. Uh, you can see she's about a year old, but she's uh, growing pretty big already, you know, for a yearling boa. Um, just a beautiful animal. You can see as babies, they have a little bit more of a well-defined saddle pattern. And that when they become adults, the pattern gets a little more broken up and a little more like a, a net-like pattern. Um, this animal has still has a little bit of the pink colors that they have as juveniles, but it's really fading. Not really juveniles, they have it as babies. Um, and what I expect that over the next few years, should become kind of more increasingly black and white or you know black and dark brown and cream just more of a contrast between the colors um, you know as well her iridescence will get a little bit more intense but these are as i mentioned are some of my favorite boas and i was just lucky to find this really nice pair to add to my breeding group for you know probably it's probably going to be f at least four or five years before this animal is ready to go but with these boas, you've got to be patient and just enjoy every step of the process, growing them up to become future breeders. So I hope this video was helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.